Hi, Steve Arnold here from Post Processing Mastery. And in this video, I'm showing you three ways to blend bracketed exposures in Photoshop to create natural high dynamic range landscapes. So these are the techniques that I use all the time myself. And they're also what I've taught to thousands of students who have taken my luminosity masking mastery course since 2013. Now the techniques are on the advanced side when it comes to layer masking, but stick with me through to the end of the video because the effect that using these techniques will have on your images is more than worth it. So if you're watching this video on YouTube with the comments below, then let me know if you like this video and which of these tips you'll be trying out in your own workflow by adding a comment below. And if you want to be notified by YouTube when I publish new videos, make sure that you click that subscribe button in the bottom corner. So the first method of blending bracket exposures I'm showing you is with simple layer masking. And if you haven't done any kind of bracketed exposure blending before, then I'd definitely recommend starting with this. Now what I have open in Photoshop at the moment is a document with four bracketed exposures. So we've just numbered these exposures one, two, three, and four. So we've got this dark exposure on the top, which is number four. This one here, number three, slightly brighter. Number two is actually the brightest. And number one is what I'm gonna use as the base exposure. So to get started blending these in, what I'm gonna do is start with, like I said, the number one is the base exposure. So this is what we're going to be blending the other exposures into. And the first thing I'm going to do is take the darker parts of the image from this brightest exposure and blend those in. So first things first, let's activate this layer and then add a black layer mask to then disable or to conceal this layer. So to do that, I'll hold on the keyboard Alt or Option and click on the Add Layer Mask button and that adds a black layer mask. Now, all we need to do is take a brush with a white foreground color, about 30% opacity, and I'm just going to increase the brush size a bit. And just making sure that I've clicked on the layer mask itself and not the layer. I'm just going to start brushing into the shadow areas in, uh, in the foreground here. And as I do that, you can see that the, uh, the lighter parts or the lighter exposure is uh, starting to be revealed here. And we're blending these shadows in, basically just increasing the amount of detail that we can see in those darkest parts of the image. Now this is a good way to get started, like I said, but it is uh, lacking a little bit of control and accuracy. What I mean by that is that because I'm just using a brush without any kind of uh, restriction into the layer mask, I'm going to have to be really careful not to brush over the edges of these parts that I uh, you know, don't want to uh, blend in. So for example, if I wanted to uh, to brighten up this rock out here, then I'm gonna have to zoom in and just basically try to be as accurate as I can. And to be honest, I'm never really gonna be able to get 100% accuracy unless I'm literally zooming into a ridiculous uh, level and then, you know, using a really small brush and just brushing as close up to those edges as I can. Uh, and even then, the slightest mistake is gonna cause halos. So what that might look like if I did go over the edge would be, you know, if, uh, if I'm brightening outside of those dark areas, you can see I've just created like a light halo, like an edge around the outside of that rock. So this, uh, this method using the basic layer masking is a good way to get started and it's going to be better than, uh, than not doing it at all. However, what I'm going to show you in the next, uh, in the next method is going to really uh, give you the accuracy that this first method lacks. So rather than go on to uh, blend all of these exposures in using this first method, what I'll actually do is move on to method number two and we'll run through blending all four exposures using luminosity masks. So let's just reset this. I'll delete the layer mask, disable that layer number two. Okay, so method number two is, like I said, using the luminosity masks to blend these exposures in. So the first step is actually going to be the same. So I'm going to enable this uh, layer two here, and I'm going to hold on the keyboard Alt or Option and click on the Add Layer Mask button. That's going to add the black layer mask. Now, what I need to do to, uh, to kind of protect the lighter parts of this foreground as I'm brushing through into the layer mask, I need to load a selection. 
And the best way to do that is to use the uh, channels panel and create a selection that's based on the brightness of the image. So the steps to do this are command, well, on the keyboard hold command on a Mac or control on a PC, click the RGB channel and then click the save selection as channel icon down here and that will save this, uh, that will create this alpha one channel. So let's have a look at this now. And this is basically a black and white version of the image where the darkest parts of the image are appearing darkest in this channel and vice versa, the lightest parts are appearing lighter. Now to create a selection that isolates the darkest parts, which is what we want, because we want to create a selection that is selecting the shadows in the image. We actually need to make this, um, this channel needs to be inverted so that the darkest parts of the image are actually the lightest parts of the channel. So we can do that by clicking on alpha one channel and then on the keyboard holding command or control and pressing I and that inverts the layer mask. So if as I'm running through this, uh, you feel that it's going a bit fast and that I'm kind of moving through a bit too quickly, then check out the video that I published a couple of days ago, uh, layer masking in Photoshop, three advanced tips, because that will actually uh, walk you through the kind of the fundamentals of this process that, uh, that I'm showing you or that I'm using here. So if, uh, you know, if as I'm running through this, it goes a bit quickly and uh, you feel like I've sort of skipped out some detail, then go and check that video out and then you can watch that and then come back and uh, pick up here and you should be fine. So uh, yeah, with that said, let's continue on. Uh, so the next thing that I need to do to, uh, to further isolate these uh, darkest parts of these uh, rocks here is uh, I need to intersect the alpha one channel with itself. And what that's going to do is it's going to create more isolation between the water and the rocks. So to do that, I just need to command or control click on alpha one to load it as a selection and to intersect the selection with the alpha one channel again on the keyboard, I hold command option shift on a Mac or control alt shift on a PC and then click on alpha one again. And then you see the selection changes and it kind of seems to be focusing more on those rocks. And I'll just press that once more and that should give us a good amount of isolation now. So if I click the uh, save selection as channel button, then we should get alpha two. And if I look at this now, we can see that the, uh, the rocks are a lot more uh, separated from the, uh, from the water, from the surrounding water. Uh, so yeah, I think this will make a good selection to brush through uh, into the layer mask. So let's press command H to hide those marching ants. The selection is still active. We're just hiding the, uh, the visual. Uh, let's click back on RGB channel. Now back over into layers, click on the layer mask. And now we've got the white brush still selected from last time. And I'll just increase the brush size. And I'll just start brushing into the uh, into the shadows here. And thanks to that luminosity selection that's active, it's allowing us to go up to those edges, but the selection is actually preventing us from brushing over the edges and creating those halos. So that really is the uh, the power of luminosity masking, and that's what uh, yeah, you know, that's the extra level of accuracy that luminosity masking gives you in a nutshell. Uh, so let me just continue on around the bottom here, just making sure that I've brought enough of those uh, shadows through. Okay, now let's have a look at the effect of having blended this layer in with the original uh, background layer. And there we go. So that's pretty effective. Now let's do the same thing, but with uh, layer three. So from here, we're probably just going to blend in this, uh, this brightest part of the horizon, just because at the moment here on this, uh, on this main image or on these main layers combined, that is uh, slightly overexposed. Uh, so let's enable that. Now, before I add the layer mask, I just need to uh, deselect the active selection because if I press command or control H again, then we can see the selection is still active. So I'll just deselect that command or control D on the keyboard. 
And now let's add the black layer mask. So Alt or Option, click on the Add Layer Mask button. So we've got the black mask there now. And this time, instead of selecting the uh, shadows in the image, we need to select the highlights. So let's come into the Channels panel. And now I'm just going to delete these two alpha channels just to get them out of the way. We don't need them anymore. And I will Command click on RGB to load RGB as a selection. And now let's save this as a uh, new channel. We can see here the, uh, the brightest part of the sky here is the brightest part in the channel. So we're not going to need to invert the channel this time. But there's not quite enough isolation between that, uh, that bright part of the sky under the clouds um, and yeah, isolation between that and the clouds and the sea. So we need to intersect this again with itself. Let's go uh, Command Option Shift or Control Alt Shift on the keyboard. Click on Alpha 1 again and then once more for good luck. Just to further dive into those uh, highlights and isolate them uh, even more. Uh, let's now click the Save Selection as Channel button to create Alpha 2. And now this is uh, showing us the visual representation of the selection that we've got active. And you can see there now, you know, the, the sky is a lot darker and the sea is a lot darker. These rocks in the distance are a lot darker compared to the sky here, which is what we're going to be blending through from that darker exposure. So this will do a great job for us. So let's go back into RGB. Let's go into the Layers panel. Click on the Layer Mask. Now let's hide the Marching Ants again. Command or Control H. And let's just brush across the sky here. And as I do that, we can see those brightest parts of this exposure are now being brought through into the, uh, into the image. So let's disable and re-enable this layer just to see the effect that that's had. And um, yeah, I think that's a pretty good job. I think we've probably still got a little bit more detail and texture in those brightest parts of the sky that we could bring in from this darkest exposure. So let's do that quickly now. Command or Control D to deselect my active selection. Alt or Option, click on Add Layer Mask. Let's come back over into Channels panel and we can reuse this Alpha 2 channel that we uh, created a minute ago. Command or Control, click on that. Back into RGB, click on Layers, click on the Layer Mask. Command or Control H to hide the marching ants. And let's just brush through here. Let's give it one sweep across the uh, sky there and I think that is probably about as much as we want to do there so just making sure that it's not overexposed really and just making sure there's detail and texture in there and if we just compare uh, when I disable these two top layers here just so that we can see what we've blended in from that bright overexposed part of the sky there and we can see the benefit of using luminosity selections to create these layer masks because when I disable these layers, notice how this rock on the horizon isn't changing in brightness at all. And I didn't have to brush around those edges whatsoever. And if we actually look at the layer mask itself, Alt or Option, click on the layer mask, we can see that it's only the sky and a little bit of the sea there that we've blended in from this uh, layer three and then also layer four. So just to show you what that would look like if I tried to do that without the luminosity selection, uh, let's command D or control D to deselect the active selection. And I'm just gonna press command or control delete on the layer mask to, uh, to fill it with black. Now imagine I didn't have the alpha two channel available and I was just gonna use a brush straight into the layer mask. Now, what I would have to do using the first method is try to brush as close around the edges of this rock here as I can without actually brushing into the rock itself. And so, you know, I'm zoomed in at 200% here now. And even at that, I'm still going to be brushing over the edges slightly just to make sure that I'm going all the way up to the edge in the sky. And... Well, for one, that's going to be an extremely time-consuming uh, task to do that. But two, it's going to create either dark halos 
around the inside edge of this rock from where I've brushed over the edge into the rock or it's going to create light halos where I'm not going all the way up to the edge on the outside of it. So that is how to blend exposures using luminosity masks. Now the third method that I actually want to show you is uh, something that's going to take this uh, luminosity masking method and make it a lot quicker and easier to implement in your workflow. So if you haven't got my luminosity masking panel, there'll be a link below the video where you can uh, go and grab that. Now this is something that I designed and developed and coded myself uh, just based on how I use luminosity masks. And I've tried to make it as easy uh, and efficient for people like you to, uh, to use. You know, I really wanted to take the complication out of luminosity masking. So the luminosity masking panel just makes it as easy as possible to basically do everything I just showed you there using uh, method two, but in a quick and easy way. So let me just run through and uh, yeah, I'll show you what that looks like if we were using the panel. So let's enable layer two now. So we're starting over, uh, we'll enable layer two. Let's add the layer mask to layer two. And now let's grab a selection to isolate the shadows in the image so that we can brush through that to reveal layer two in the shadow areas. Um, we've got a choice here. We can use the previews on or off. Let's use them uh, on for now so that we can actually see the selection before we use it. Uh, and we've got this bar across the middle here. So anything to the left of zero is a shadow selection and anything to the right is a highlight selection. And the further you go left or the further you go right, the deeper into the shadows or the deeper into the highlights you're going to be creating a selection for. So if we think back to when we created the channel, uh, the alpha channel for the shadows, we actually intersected it a couple of times uh, to dive deeper into those shadows. So that would be the equivalent of using, for example, a three or a four on the shadows end. Uh, let's, let's use a four. Um, and when I press the button there, the four is going to create that preview so that we can see what this selection looks like. So this is essentially showing us that whole process that we ran through in the channels panel but just at the click of a button. And once we're happy with this selection, we can click use mask here and it loads it as a selection. And now we can hide the marching ants if we want, Command H or Control H. And then we can just use the brush to start brushing through to reveal the shadows in the foreground. So let me just do that. I'll just spend a second just running around the image, just bringing those shadows through. And again, if I press Command or Control H, just to show you here, we've still got the selection active. And so the, uh, the brush is being restricted to inside of those, uh, you know, those, those parts that are in the selection. Okay, so let's deselect that, Command D, and have a look at the, uh, the blend. So that's brought the, uh, the shadows in. Now let's do the uh, same thing for the highlights in layer three. So I'm going to activate the layer. Alt or option click on add layer mask. Now this time we want a selection for the highlights and I think we intersected it a couple of times again. So the uh, the equivalent of intersecting the highlights a couple of times would be a three or a four on the highlights end of the selections bar here. So let's use a three. And there we've got that preview of the selection where the, uh, the sky there just underneath the clouds and above the horizon is the brightest part. And it's got good contrast between those two things that we were trying to isolate. So happy with that, we can click use mask. And again, just like before, let's just run the brush through the middle there to reveal layer three and bring that color and detail back into the sky. And for layer four, Again, we're just gonna bring a little bit of that detail through from the sky in the same place. So let's add that layer mask, Alt Option, click on Add Layer Mask. And I'll just show you if, um, you know, if you wanna make this whole thing even quicker and save one or two extra clicks, then you can turn the previews off. If you're confident that you know which one of these selection buttons you're gonna click and you don't need to see the preview. So if we just turn the previews off and then hit the uh, highlights three button that's just going to load that selection immediately without going uh, via that preview 
and then having to click use mask. So just pressing three on the uh, on the bar there in the highlights uh, on the highlights end of the bar. Let's click on the layer mask again for layer four. And again, let's just brush through the sky there to reveal the extra little bit of color and detail. And there we have it. That is how you blend four exposures in Photoshop using layer masks and luminosity masks. So like I said earlier, if, uh, if any of this seemed uh, you know one or two steps ahead of where you are right now, then go back and check out the video that I published a couple of days ago, which um, yeah, this video really follows on from that earlier video. So that's definitely worth checking out. I'll uh, put a little link up in the top corner of the video that should appear about now. Uh, that will allow you to go and watch that. Um, otherwise, if you want to download my luminosity masking panel, then I'll put a link in the description below the video for that also. And all that leaves me with to say is thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you next time.